that uh, Jessica just has just presented. Uh, and what I'm going to be presenting is uh, is what comes after that white paper. Um, so uh, my name is Rolf Brink. I'm the CEO of Asperitas, and I'm also one of the authors of the white paper. And I'm also leading the immersion group. Uh, right now, this presentation is an Asperitas presentation, uh, outlining. Trying to get my presentation to work. Yeah, outlining the uh, uh, how what happens when you implement this white paper in reality. So before I can get into the gritty details uh, around IT platforms, uh, just want to explain very briefly uh, for to give a bit of a frame of reference uh, where Asperitas is engaged in. Asperitas is a liquid. Uh, technology vendor. Uh, we are working with uh, single phase immersion and our circulation mechanism is based on natural convection. So our system is completely passive in nature and the driving force behind the liquid flow here is heat. And that heat is being generated by a T equipment. And this also immediately brings me to the relevance of IT design in this specific setting because we exclusively work with optimized IT equipment where all the hottest components are positioned in the bottom of a tank which and all these components are responsible for heating up that liquid which is the cooling function of the liquid absorbing that heat and by doing so the liquid expands or warms up and expands and rises to the surface and in the same bath in the same uh, liquid bath, there are water there are water cooled heat exchangers immersed as well, and they apply cooling again to the liquid, and they transfer that thermal energy from the dielectric fluid into the water circuit, the facility water circuit directly, uh, and that applies a cooling effect, which creates a higher density and causes the liquid to sink again, and that creates a nice uh, natural convection circulation mechanism, and because the system is set up as a symmetrical system, it is also symmetrical in nature. Um, the IT equipment, uh, Asperitas is heavily focused on uh, optimizing IT equipment for immersion. And there are many good reasons for it. Uh, in our case, because mostly also because we're working on uh, high availability platforms quite a lot, uh, which means that we need to cover all the bases when it comes to IT equipment. Uh, and we have a process for this, and that process is uh, almost identical to the design guidelines for immersion cooled IT equipment. And it covers all the aspects that Jessica has just presented and that the white paper contains. When it comes to, uh, regardless of whether we're talking about uh, mechanical design uh, aspects or thermal design aspects or material compatibility, material compatibility being the foundation to everything that we do, uh, it's all part of that uh, explicit process. So the very first step in any kind of certification approach is the uh, collection of platform requirements. What is it that you want to achieve? Uh, because there are, there are many different directions that you should take when looking at optimization. What are you actually optimizing for? Because just optimizing for immersion is only part of that question. So we're looking at density, performance, or thermal optimizations, which may actually have completely different outcomes. And I'm going to show you three different uh, outcomes of, of, a, of this same process. Uh, and those requirements are captured in system specifications, thermal design uh, uh, aspects, and a system design overview, and that ends up in a feasibility result. And that is the completion of the first level. The second level of that certification includes the physical system build, prototyping, material analysis studies, and thermal performance analysis. And the third level uh, of this process is focused on having that complete and validated and especially documented system design with test reports, with duration tests, and with full thermal and material certification. After that process is completed, this process is designed to hand back over to either a system integrator or an OEM. And this whole process is completely focused on collaborations with OEMs and system integrators. Asperitas is not an IT vendor or an IT uh, manufacturer, but we help OEMs and integrators in, in fulfilling this process. And that is all aimed to facilitate fully warranted solutions. 
So in every project that we work on, we work with the same basic cassette starting point, uh, a basic Sershi starting point, and that is the Asperitas Open Cassettes spec, which has been uh, an OCP, which is, which is an OCP accepted product, uh, and which is, which can be used to engineer an optimized platform. And this was actually contributed uh, and launched uh, during the Global Summit this year. Now I'm gonna be going into a couple of examples. So I already mentioned I'm gonna be showing three completely different examples. So I'm I'm gonna be uh, giving you some insights on what what type of considerations you run into with an edge platform in this case. So an actual project that we've done with Boston Supermicro and AMD for an edge platform with uh, which is focused on high cooling temperature tolerance. In this case, 48 degrees Celsius as a minimum cooling supply, as in that is the water temperature that goes into the system, and you need to be able to operate the IT equipment with that temperature. With what we call at least a medium CPU density, uh, and the medium mostly refers to the, uh, the uh, CPU spec in this case, which allows us to, to optimize the, uh, uh, the CPU spec for the purpose of high temperature tolerance. And we're looking at a minimized footprint, which means that we're confining uh, uh, the sizing of the chassis. In this case, we're working with a 15 inch chassis. Uh, the second example is an ent enterprise mainstream platform, which is mostly focused on high availability. This is based on a Dell system and that we're also worked on together with Dell as a more readily available market product, which is immersion optimized. It's a high availability focus with high overall efficiency and which addresses high serviceability. So that comes out with completely different design requirements. And finally, I'll be showing some insights on an HPC platform, which is a collaboration with Penguin, Gigabyte and Intel, uh, and is also focused on NVIDIA GPUs. And this is purely focused on high performance. At CPU and GPU dense application, and, it's, and then as a third line item, high overall efficiency. Now, the first example being the, uh, the high thermal optimization. Um, there's two main driving aspects, uh, uh, two main aspects driving the design decisions behind this. Uh, one is the, uh, the, the small uh, confined sizing, which means that we have to squeeze a 19 inch system into a 15 inch chassis. Um, and this is focused on the high thermal uh, capabilities as a number one target, which means that all the hottest components uh, that, that this system will, will be running hot. So that means that the most vulnerable component is placed in the bottom of the system, which is in the rear end of the chassis, which is the power supply in this case. And immediately after that come as low as possible in that thermal environment, the CPUs. Now these CPUs are selected to be uh, especially uh, tolerant to high temperature operation. So these are 180 watt CPUs. Um, and by, uh, in this case, we're actually harnessing the shadowing effect from the CPUs to accelerate flow rate, right? So we're achieving higher flow rates because of the shadowing effect. Because in our case, the, therm the circulation mechanism is driven by the CPUs. Uh, when, it, when we're looking at the enterprise system optimization, um, what we've done there is, again, based on the open cassettes, uh, what uh, the first decision that needs to be made is, uh, and let me just quickly scroll back here. If you look at that enterprise system, it's got hard drives on one end and blades on the other. And this system has been specifically designed for serviceability, hot swapping hard drives and, hot, and, and, and servicing blades uh, whenever you feel like it without extracting the entire system. Now with immersion, there is only one side of that chassis which you can actually service and which you can actually access, which changes the design parameters. If I maintain hard drives and the blades, one end of that chassis is going to be in the bottom of a tank. So servicing that side means I have to dive in uh, with snorkeling gear probably and try to get underneath the system to extract a hard drive or a blade, which is of course not possible. So you're going to have to make a choice whether, whether the 
hard drives or the blades are relevant. In this case, the blades, the compute solution and the serviceability of the blades was the driver was a driving decision for the system design. So what happens now is uh, the, the blades become serviceable from the top side, but because the top side of the liquid is also the hottest part of the environment, we want to make sure that these blades can, uh, can be extended all the way to the bottom part of the tank. All right, so in this case, all the blades are extended with adapters, and that also accounts for the power supply. So in this situation, all the CPUs and the power supplies are in the lowest parts of, the, of an immersion tank, which means that these, says, these are the components that will all receive the coolest liquid first. And that is important for reliability in this case and serviceability. So you still maintain a dual power supply, you still maintain uh, serviceability. The only sacrifice is that there is no hard drive base anymore. So right now, uh, this, uh, this configuration relies on onboard uh, storage. Now, with the HPC design, again, this is a different approach. This is a, a one u chassis. This is much more focused on squeezing as many GPUs into a system as possible. So in this case, we're talking about four heavy duty GPUs, which are all positioned in the bottom of the chassis and you, you're trying to stick in the, uh, uh, the CPUs as deep as possible as well. In this, case, this particular instance, the limiting factor is the, uh, the mainboard design, which prevents this mainboard from being, pl being placed further uh, downward. Um, another consideration with this system is the integration of the power supply. The original platform was actually designed for a bus bar implementation, but with a bus bar implementation, the power shelf requires about 16% of space in the tank, um, which in, in, with immersion translates directly to a square meters impact on the facility. A 17% of space is suddenly taken up by power supplies. Uh, by integrating that power supply, we can increase the density of this platform by, uh, because we don't need a lot of other space. So the original system design is a 21 inch spec, but we're saving a lot of space because we don't need airflow, for example. So all the space that is normally taken up by fans and by the power, in power infrastructure, power delivery board that was integrated in the system, that space is now utilized to, in to include the power supply. Uh, furthermore, we've been able to convert a 1OU into a 1U density simply because we can with immersion. We don't need the height, uh, the additional height in, in systems because we can rely on liquid flow. Um, and in all these collaborations, uh, we're looking at primarily uh, as soon as we, before even going into or touching liquid or getting anywhere near liquid, the very first that's being addressed with physical materials is material compatibility. So on every platform, we document exactly where we can find suspect materials. Uh, most things, to, uh, most of the times we look out for capacitors, thermal compounds, labels and fence simulator applications that uh, power supplies very often still today cannot operate without fans being present. But at the same time, you don't want to have fans in an immersed system. So cutting off those fans and applying fan simulators, which are also part of the OCP specs, uh, is a way to deal with that, for example. Uh, tests are, uh, are something that we take very seriously. Uh, when components are small enough, we use thermal bath testing and we take oil samples. We test uh, every device, every, all the equipment. We test it extensively. And sometimes those tests can be destructive in nature, uh, depending on how thorough we need to, uh, uh, we need to uh, execute the, that kind of test regime. Um, and especially duration testing is of relevance. But what is even more important here is how you can achieve proper test results. Because um, like I already mentioned, Asperitas is an immersion cooling vendor. We supply immersion tanks and a lot, but we're not a server manufacturer. We do not sell IT equipment. We're not a vendor of IT, uh, but we're also not a vendor of liquid. 
So we've partnered up with uh, with Shell as well as all the as well as OEMs as integrators to help them facilitate uh, or, or to jointly facilitate a process like this. Uh, and Shell, in this case, performs a lot of the material testing in their labs uh, after we've done the thermal bath testing. So we take oil samples, we send it off to uh, to, to the to the labs. Uh, and they do further oil analysis. And this is something that we bring to all the OEMs and all our partnerships as well. Now, finally, on uh, thermal optimization. First of all, thermal shadowing. Uh, uh, I mentioned the HPC platform. So thermal shad shadowing in that platform is a thing. So we've selected, uh, we specified certain CPUs. Uh, and we're looking closely at positioning of this equipment. So thermal analysis of the whole system, especially by utilizing CFD materials, is critical to make these kind of platforms predictable. And over here at the bottom right, there is a small example of what such an exercise looks like. And this is something that we systematically do for every uh, configuration. Uh, and it doesn't stick with CFD analysis, because the most important thing with CFDs is that you consider it a tool and not the truth. You always have to be suspect of CFD images, and therefore we test things as well. And this is one of the example, uh, one of the outcomes of our test uh, uh, testing logs that we collect some data and where we can see the actual thermal performance of a system. Um, and we, we look for the thermal boundaries. We actively pursue overheating just to make sure that we can determine what the boundaries are of a specific platform in, uh, in, a, in an immersion environment. Hey, Rob. Uh, and over here is a good example of how you, how you, yes. You're about five minutes over and I wanna make sure we have room for any Q and A. So yeah, just didn't, that's a, you know. All right, uh, last slide then. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely correct, sorry. Um, yeah, so um, the relevance of uh, heat sink optimization, for example, um, on the left side here, in the left bottom side, uh, we see a test with a normal air design heat sink. And on the right side, we see a test with in the exact same configuration, exact same thermals, uh, based on a slightly differently selected heat sink uh, for immersion with slightly uh, increased a uh, slightly further optimized fin pitch, fin thickness, and minima, minimal uh, increased uh, shape, uh, optimized shape with uh, two different clock speeds. Uh, in this case, this directly results in clock speeds at certain uh, limiting temperature ranges. Right, so optimization is relevant. We're doing this sort of process with a lot of the OEMs and also a lot of integrators, and it really pays off. So, so a lot of improved capabilities are unlocked by this kind of work, by this kind of optimization. Um, but this can only be achieved not by, not because Asperitas knows how to do this process. No, Asperitas cannot do anything with this unless we do this in collaboration with manufacturers, with integrators and with liquid experts. And this is exactly what, why we are in OCP and why we do what we do in OCP. And that's also where the call to action comes in because the cross-pollination between work groups, ACS immersion and the server group is now, gone, uh, now has to be imminent because we need to start focusing on aligning or resources and aligning or efforts to make sure that all the upcoming service packs are gonna be suitable and preferably even optimized for immersion, and we're here to help out. Hey, thanks, Rolf. Um, I'm looking Apologies at- Apologies for uh, running over time. That's okay. I'm looking at uh, the track here, and I don't actually see any questions coming in, so maybe <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> um, CMAC, Ja, do you have anything additional, or Jessica, that you want to add to Rolf's presentation? And that might require <laughs> unmuting. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Um, Rolf, uh, sorry, uh, uh, CMAC and Ja, that was our last uh, uh, session for today. 
So I was just wondering if you wanted to say some closing words to the audience. We, I think we still have about 70 people left in the, in the, in the room, so. Yeah, uh, yeah. First, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ralph and Jessica for uh, dropping by the server community for uh, bringing the awareness of what's going on with advanced schooling uh, group. Uh, yeah, thank you for joining by. And I would like to uh, thank everyone who participated. Uh, I believe as uh, we are kind of ranging between 60 to 100 people throughout the session, which I think in a, a kind of uh, 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 offline or the rear uh, interaction session in the past, it will be filled with a big room. So uh, yeah, I think that's a very high level of community engagement. Uh, and uh, thank you everyone for attending today. The only thing that I wanted to add was that uh, these sessions will be available on demand uh, next week. Um, all of the sessions have downloads available for um, all of the presentation material. You can catch it on the right hand side right below the chat under, I think it says uh, additional resources and material. Um, and so yeah. All of the videos will be available next week sometime. It'll take us a little time to process it. Uh, CMAC, you were about to say something. Uh, yeah, I would just wanted to add that um, as you guys see, there are a lot of challenges in front of us. There are lots of, lot of opportunities available. And uh, there are very many smart people as part of our community. It'll be great to collaborate and um, solve problems together. Uh, there's enough to go around for all of us. Uh, John, you're also online. So I know we're doing a wrap up here. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been uh, not on the Zoom call, but uh, on the, uh, the other end of it, going back and forth between all the presentations. So I've been on for uh, most of the uh, presentations. I want to thank all the uh, presenters for today, and I think we had a really good session. Uh, lots of challenges ahead, but that's what keeps life interesting. So thank everyone for participating. Yep, and uh, I'm speaking on behalf of CMAC and John and Ja. They need all of the help that they can get. They want active participation. You can see there's a lot of work to do, lots of different work streams, lots of cross collaboration across different uh, communities, other open organizations, as well as within, you know, within the server community. So if you're interested, uh, please do join our calls. They're open to everyone. Join our mailing list. And I'm sure that John and CMAC and Zhao will be able to assign you <laughs> any kind of action that you're looking for, as well as any kind of interest that you bring forward. So Again, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your tech week. I know that we still have a few more sessions that are going on this afternoon after lunch. So thank you again, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, have a great rest of your day. Thank you for uh, hosting the session. Mm -hmm. Take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>